In this video, we're going to look at how to use the paint effect to recolor just a portion of our screen, like her fingernails here, or to recolor even a larger portion, like our skyline right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, I've already recolored these, and there's some tracking going on on this clip, which we'll also get into. I've already recolored both of these clips, and I'm gonna show you exactly how we did that with the paint tool. So first, I'll just get rid of those effects, and first, we'll work on our fingernails here. Now you can use the paint tool for lots of different things, but in this video, we're going to use it to recolor just a portion of our image. And for our first example, it's gonna be something that's kind of difficult because I wanna show you, you know, just how powerful this really is. So we applied our paint effect. We'll go ahead and pop in here to our effects monitor and right off the bat, nothing happened. That's because we haven't painted anything on our screen. Now we have a brush tool right here. Start painting like that, but we don't wanna do that in this case. What we're going to do in this video we're going to be using this tool right here, the poly tool. Now we have other tools here, rectangle tool, oval tool, our brush as you saw there, and our curve tool, and of course, you know, things like our reshape tool and our selection tool. But what we want to recolor her fingernails, I'm going to use the poly tool. So we'll select it and we'll go ahead and zoom in here. And I have videos showing how to zoom in when you're in effects mode, so be sure to check those out. And what we need to do before we can actually see anything here, like our color, choosing our color, what we need to do is actually draw a shape. So let's go ahead and draw a shape. I'm gonna hold on control again, zoom in a bit more, make sure we have our poly tool. I'm just going to trace out her finger now. Now in order to do this, I'll just click once. Hopefully you can see that line there. See that line? Okay, so I just clicked once and now I'm just dragging my mouse. I click again, click again. I'm just going to trace the outline of her fingernail here. getting it as good as I can. We can always kind of reshape it a bit later on with the reshape tool. And once we make a perfect circle there or close it off, then we actually see the effect come up there. So right now that color is red. Now we could use red for the fingernail, that's fine, but I wanna do something that's completely different from what she has now. So they both kind of have like pink, uh, you know, pinkish reds. So let's change this to something completely different. How about we change it to a green? Now I'm going to double click on here we could choose a green, that would work just fine, it changes to green, or I might want to click here and get my eyedropper, see our color info box here, grab our eyedropper. Maybe I want this green here of this shirt to sort of match uh, the fingernails there. We can, we can do that no problem, right, so we'll try that. Okay, so that's kind of a muted green. I actually think I'm gonna just go back, just double click there, choose this green here just so it shows up really well and we can really see it. Okay, so that's, pretty much how you would do that. You see, it doesn't look that great right now. And as soon as we start scrolling through, you see her head's moving, her hand's moving. So we're gonna lose our position. Not a problem because we're going to track it. And I already have videos showing how to do tracking. So hopefully you've already watched those. All right, so let's go ahead and let's just go through some of these settings here. Have our selection tool, we'll just grab our shape and we'll go through the color. We already did the color. Here's our hue, saturation, our luminance uh, slider there. You can adjust. We have our brush controls if we're using our brush tool here of the different shapes and things you can get with this. But we're not going to be using the brush here in the paint tool. What we want is feathering. We want to feather this out. And another thing you need to be aware of is the mode. We have sort of these blending modes here. So we could choose erase. And let me actually make sure I have this selected first. So if we choose erase, you can see what that does. If we choose hue, you can see that actually works pretty well. We could choose saturation, choose darken only. Bunch of options you can go through for the way this is going to blend with your picture, all right? But what we want is solid, and we want to bring the opacity down a bit because there's like a shine on these fingernails and we wanna make sure that still shows through. We want some feathering here, just a bit, not a whole lot, so just a couple of points, and then we'll change the bias a little bit. And I can zoom in here so I can actually see what I'm doing. Change the bias. And that's pretty good. I'm actually gonna move this down about there. And I'm gonna grab my reshape tool and zoom in a little more. And I can reshape this hard edge here a little bit. Just a bit. So it's more round, selection tool. I'm gonna to bring it down a bit and over. Zoom out, and that looks pretty darn good. 
Okay, so let me go ahead and finish up these other fingernails. We're going to do this one and this one here. So control click zoom in. We'll go ahead and get these all drawn out. We're going to use the same tool, our poly tool. And we'll just click. Okay, that one's done. It looks pretty good. I might need to use my reshape tool just a little bit. Just to make it a little bit more round. It looks pretty good. I'm going to move it just a tiny bit. All right, now let me go ahead and do this fingernail over here as well. So I'll grab our poly tool and I'll go ahead and finish this one out here. Just doing the same thing, just clicking at all of these different points so I can get sort of a rounded shape. Okay, so that one's done. Once again, I might want to uh, soften these edges a bit, kind of round them out with our reshape tool. Pull this down and you can spend even more time on this to get it absolutely perfect. Okay, but that is the basics of using our paint tool to recolor just a, a certain area. Remembering our modes here, our transfer modes, our feathering, our bias. Now we have things like acceleration, which we probably won't use. Uh, you know, you've seen this in like the mosaic and the blur effects as well. We could go ahead and color this nail here, but we're not going to. All right, so let's go ahead. As you can see, I zoom out. That looks pretty darn good. If, if you didn't know, I'll hit Control Shift F. You can see this full screen. You can see, well, you know, as soon as I start playing, we're going to lose it. But if I didn't tell you I'd recolored this, you would have no idea that I had recolored that. All right, so now, as we saw, as soon as we start playing through, you know, since she's moving, we've lost our color. That's not going to work, right? Well, that is not a problem because we can track it. Now, of course, we could come up here and open up tracking, but I'll just open up our tracking window. I already have videos showing tracking, so I'm not going to cover that here. Be sure to watch those videos if you want to know how to track. As far as what we're going to track, I've considered tracking her head since it's one movement, but I don't think I could get a good track on that. I may be able to. You can always retract. What I'm going to do, I'm going to actually track the actual fingernails here. So I'll track this one. Pull this down to about there. Zoom out a bit. Make this a little larger than it actually needs to be. Just because this clip is so darn short, there's no reason, you know, not to just have a little bigger search area. Grab me another tracker. And I think we'll just track two fingernails here. We won't track the third one here, the little finger there. All right, so our trackers look pretty good. Awesome. We'll go ahead and track this here. Won't take long at all. We'll just watch it. So as you can see, the trackers are doing pretty well. They're staying right with the fingernail. It's almost done, and there it is. There's our tracking data. Now, if we go to effect results, you're not going to see anything, at least not anything good, because we haven't associated our tracking data with any of these points. Not a problem. So we'll just come back here to tracking. Let's, we could assign this tracker to A, but it's not gonna do anything because we need to select the shape first. And I could uh, shift select these if you wanna select multiple ones. Okay, but I wanna select this first one, come over to tracking, and we want point A. All right, let's see how that did. So we're just tracking just this one. And you can see, that's a pretty damn good job of tracking. And nobody would even know you had recolored that, you know, if I hadn't told you that we did. Pretty cool. Let's try this next fingernail. Let's assign this to B. Let's just see how the B tracker did. So it looks pretty good. All right. Yeah, I'm happy with that. It looks all right. What if we assign that to A instead? We could do that. It might work. Doesn't work quite as well. Although it does work, we'd have to change it a little bit. I definitely like B better for this fingernail. And this one actually needs to come down just a little bit. There we go. Okay, now what about this third fingernail? We didn't track anything there. Well, let's try A. We could always retrack it if A doesn't work, but A looks pretty good. Now we're losing it. Now we're losing it. And it's kind of going back. So what we could do is track that fingernail, which would actually be the smart thing to do. And that's what I would suggest you do. But what we'll do is let's just try B to see if that's any better at all. And it's, you know, it's a little bit better. Okay, but if you didn't want to track it, again, you don't necessarily have to, although I, you know, I would. What we can do, I'll just zoom in so we can really see this here. I'm gonna keep just dragging through here. And right there, we're losing it. I'm gonna go a little further. Okay, now watch, I'll just grab this. We have our selection tool. Now if I grab this and move it, Okay, so it's not giving me a keyframe. I'll just go ahead and add a keyframe there. Okay. 
and then we'll move it a little more and okay so we're losing it here so i'll just put a keyframe here move it there and let me go back here so as you can see by adding those keyframes it's keeping our paint exactly over that fingernail we're just adjusting it instead of you know retracking or tracking this fingernail which is what you should do it would definitely be easier in this case some cases maybe not if you just have little tiny adjustments in this case it would definitely just be smarter to to you know try to track it but we'll use keyframes just to show you how it's done okay and come down right before the last keyframe and make sure it's right here and come down to the last keyframe and make sure it's right there okay cool so now it looks pretty good we're losing it a bit here actually we uh, put a keyframe a bit too far that's all right let's add a keyframe here pull it where it should be and that looks all right it's not perfect it would be much better to actually track it but that is something that you can do as well okay cool so there we go now if i hit play plays through all of our paint, all of our recolored area is completely recolored. It tracks along just fine. You would never know, you know, Control Shift F, we'll go full screen here. You'd never know that somebody had recolored that. You'd have no idea unless you, you know, saw it here. All right, pretty cool. So that's some really powerful stuff you can do with the paint tool in Avid Media Composer. And, and of course, paint tool is built into Avid Media Composer. It comes with it right here in the image category. Come down here to paint. Really easy, really cool stuff that you can do, you know, using all of these tools here using our opacity, our transfer modes, which we didn't use, but you can do that uh, using tracking, feathering. We didn't get into magic mask either, uh, using your different colors, different uh, controls there, all kind of really cool stuff. All right, so that's recoloring just a portion of the screen and using tracking. Now I'll just show you one more example of using the paint tool. And this time we're going to add a bit of a color to our sky here, just to the sky, not to the water. How are we gonna do that? Well, just like we did in this clip, right here by marking out the area we want to recolor we're going to do the same thing but we're going to do it a little bit differently let me go ahead and turn this track off here just so it doesn't get in our way cool all right grab our paint tool pow throw it right on the track hop into effects mode let me zoom out so what we need to do because this horizon line is pretty darn straight except for right here i think i might use the rectangle tool now we could use this poly tool this would actually be pretty pretty easy to use as well. Just click once and we can kind of just draw a straight line and then sort of step it up. You know, that's pretty easy to do, but I'm not gonna do that. Just control Z, control Z out of this. But what I'm going to do is use the rectangle tool here. As you saw, our, you know, our poly tool worked fine, but let's just make this hard on, our, on ourselves here, in this case. But we'll just pull this out. The horizon's pretty straight, at least in the most of it. So we'll just, Grab it there, that looks pretty good. Let me zoom out a bit. Yep, make sure I'm getting everything there. Looks cool, but of course we have the problem of that horizon, you know, we have like a little mountain there. Not a problem, we have this selected. Let me go ahead and come here to mode, pull down the opacity so I can actually see the horizon back there. Okay, now you can already tell how this effect is going to work, how we are recoloring just, just the sky there, just that portion of the sky. And actually, you know what I, I need to do? I need to make this a little bit larger here we'll just pull it out a little bit okay i think that looks all right let me get out of effects mode so i can see yeah it looks fine all right we'll pop back into effects mode here make sure i have my correct track selected and now we will select our shape and i want to use our reshape tool to get around this mountain here i want to put a point here so here's our point that we added in. I'm going to raise that up a bit. I want to put a point. I want to put a point over here. We're just clicking on there. Okay, and you can see how this is working. We'll add a point here. And we could just come in here and reshape all of these nodes. And we could get it perfect if we wanted to. But this will be okay, just like that. Okay, let me zoom out. So you can see that's pretty darn good. It's not absolutely perfect yet, 
but we're going to use feathering. So here's our selection tool. We can change our bias. I'm gonna use some feathering here. Not a whole lot, just some. And we can adjust our bias. I think it looks better a little higher. Now 68, back it off a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good already. So if you wanted a red sky with the blue sea, you would be done right now. But maybe we want to change the color, not a problem. We can use our color sliders here. And that looks pretty cool. Or of course we can double click in here, grab maybe a yellow. So it's kind of like, it looks like, you know, the sun is still going down. Come up here to mode and we can mess around with our opacity to add uh, just a little bit in there. So it looks like maybe the sun is still shining. We can use our transfer modes here to change how this blends. That looks pretty cool actually. Probably wouldn't want to use outline. Colorize would work. Luminance. Subtract. Subtract looks pretty cool. So here's the original and here's what we changed. You can see that looks pretty cool. Well, let's go back in. I, would, I think I want a yellow. And come up here and go to solid and pull the opacity down just a hair. And that's, that's what we were looking for. Just to make it look like we still have some sunbeams scattered throughout the sky there. All right, control shift F, full screen, play through, and you'd have no idea this was not the original shot. And of course we didn't need to do any tracking on this because our, our sky is static there. But that is how you can recolor just a portion of your frame, whether it's a large portion like the top portion here, even though we have this mountain, you know, we can use that reshape tool, or if it's a really small portion, like our fingernails were here. But you know, it's really cool, really powerful things that you can do. No one's gonna know, you know, as long as you set it up right, as long as you do it right, you know, things like that opacity slider, your blend modes, those are really, really going to come in handy uh, to, to make things realistic. Like, let me load up the actual clip here. So control shift F on this. So you can see the light is reflecting off of the fingernails there. We still have retained that in our recolored clip because we used opacity and pulled that down. Now there are blending modes, transfer modes that will help you uh, do the same thing, but we're still getting that light reflecting off of the fingernail. So it looks natural, looks realistic. We didn't go overboard, but you can go overboard if you want. You can do absolutely whatever you want to recolor the entire frame. You know, we could totally recolor this entire frame if we wanted to. Same for this here. We could, you know, we could recolor the entire frame if we wanted to select that shape. And we could uh, zoom out there. We could just make this huge if we wanted, like so. You could recolor that entire video clip like that. Or just draw the shape and only recolor exactly what you want. Pretty cool stuff. All right, so that is how to recolor a portion of your screen using the paint effect in Avid Media Composer. 